Hello, how are you doing? Now I've been reading some of your comments and Pufferfish asked, how do you make a moving part? And that is what we are going to address in today's video. Now there's a few ways of doing that of course and we're going to look at some of them. So first off, let's add in a part. And of course we'll add in a script. But before we even write in the script, let's just go back to the workspace and look at this part for a second. Now, so far we've changed some things like reflectance and transparency, and they're fairly straightforward as they're just a simple value that you just change 0 to 0.5 or to 1, and they're pretty straightforward. But you may notice that not all of them are like this. There are some that take multiple values and position here is one of them. You'll see there's three values here. And if I move the part around, you'll notice that all of these values change as I move the part around the world. Now these three numbers are its coordinate in space. So that's like it's a grid position, but in 3D, three dimensional space. If I click move, so I just move it along one of these arrows, You'll notice only one of the numbers changes. This is the x axis. If I click this drop down here, you can see I've got the x value, the y value, and the z value. And I can change these all individually just by moving along one axis. So if we want this part to move, obviously we've got to change one or all of these values in the position. So let's go back into our script. And to access that, we're going to have to type script.parent.position. And then I set it to equals. But I can't simply type 1, 1, 1, for example. Because if I try and run that, bad argument. Vector 3 expected got number. So vector 3 is a data type. I'll just zoom in so you can see that as well. Yeah, vector three expected got number. So a vector three is a special data type that we use for certain elements and position is one of them. So if I want to define a new position, I have to first type vector three dot new. And you see how I type this dot new uh, constructs a new vector three using coordinates. That's the little hint we've got. And then it gives two brackets, and then it's prompting us to type in three numbers. So let's just add in one, one, one. The part's current coordinates are minus 18.2, 2.9, and minus 14.8. So if we run the game now, those values should hopefully update to one, 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 which we put in our code here. So let's run. And you can see the part has moved over here. Now if we check the position, well actually it's not quite one because the part isn't anchored so I think it dropped slightly. Uh, it would need to be up, up about there and so it's just dropped onto the floor. But that was, So that worked perfectly. Now if we want to actually move it relative to its current position, we need to reference the position and then add it on. So instead of saying simply equals 111, let's say it's equal to its current position plus, and this time we're just going to move it 10 along the x axis. So we see it here, if we run, and you can see it's just moved along 10, 10 studs to the right. Uh, let's just anchor this part quickly. It's a bit annoying when it keeps falling down. Right, so what if we want some continuous movement then? Well then, let's add in a while loop, a while true. Well, we could type while true, but it's actually easier to just type while wait 0 0.1, do, and then we'll cut and paste this line down there. And let's just move one stud every 0 0.1 seconds. So let's go ahead and run that. And you can see it just snakes along, moves off into the distance, and it'll move off forever. But it's a bit stuttery, it's not the best movement that. Let's fix that a little bit. 
So we could make this wait time a bit smaller. We change that to 0 0.01. That's about the quickest uh, wait time you can achieve in Roblox. And we run that and it's going to be a bit faster and a bit smoother as well. So that's one way of getting movement. But obviously it's just continuous. What if we wanted to have it moving in different directions, say? Well, how about I create a function? I can say function, call it move. And let's take three arguments, an X argument, a Y argument, and a Z argument. And inside this function, well, actually, we can copy and paste this line. But instead of where I've hard-coded these 1, 0, and 0, I can swap them out for this x, y, and z values. Pop them in. And inside this loop, what I'm going to say is, oh, we want a loop in here as well. So how about we use a for loop here and we say for i equals 1, 10. So it's going to move 10 times. Do move it 10 times and we're going to add on 1 each time. Well, however many we define. So we're within this loop, what we're going to say is actually let's get rid of the loop for now and we'll simply say move one zero zero so this is going to be very similar to before but it's just going to move 10 studs towards the right and it should stop hopefully give that a run and has that done anything ah it's moved it all in one so we need we forgot to add a weight so we need to add on a weight here weight 0 0.01 run that and there you go and if we wanted it to move back and forth we could add in a while loop again so while true do and we don't need any pause this time because we've already got our pause uh, within this move function so hopefully this should work move one and move minus one run that and it's just going to move right and left continuously. Um, how about we make this, make it move 20 studs. And I've, I could keep using this in some different directions. So we could have it then move up and down. And then we could make it move forwards and backwards. So let's give that a try. And there you go, it's moving all over the place now. So that's one way to make a part move. But what about if we have a model? So I'm just going to duplicate this part here. I'll delete the script from the duplicate for now. And we'll add on a few more parts. Uh, something like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all these parts together. It doesn't matter the exact arrangement of these parts. I'm just messing around with them here. But let's say we have a part, something like that. We group them all together. It's now a model. And we want to move the part, say, or the model, sorry. So if I paste in this same script and try and run that, that's not going to work. Position is not a valid member of model. And of course, while the part had this position property, the model does not. Though you will notice it does have a property called primary part. Now primary part can be used to set a position for the whole model. So if I click here and I click on one of the parts within the Explorer, it will set that as the primary part. And we can also do that from within the script. So let's go into our script here and we'll say script.parent referencing the model this time dot primary part 
equals, and then I'll need to choose one of these parts. So I'll call one of these parts, I'll rename it uh, primary. So this part here is going to be my primary part of the model. Script.parent.primary part equals script.parent.primary, the one we've just named. And then what we're going to do is we'll set a variable and we'll say, actually we won't set a variable, we just need to change where we're saying script.parent.position now we want to say script.parent.primary.position equals script.parent.primary.position and move that. And oh, no, that's not going to work, is it? Three expected got object. Right, so what we need to do here change that to position and run that oh and I'm just moving the parts when we're using a model what we need to do actually was you need to say dot script dot parent colon we can use this function now and we say move to and then we take all of that and we put it within there And we run that. The whole model will now move as one. Oh, and look at them all. They're all dancing together now. So for a model, we can use this move to function. Uh, whereas individual uh, parts, you can't, you see, um, this function isn't available. But with, with models, we use the move to function. And then you specify a location and the location we've given it is the position of the primary part, which is this one right here. And it's currently equal to minus 40.9, blah, blah, blah. And then we add on the value that's been sent to the move function, which in this case is one, zero, zero, and as follows. So that's two ways to move a part, or parts, plural. What about another way? Okay, let's add in yet another part. And of course, the problem with these kind of movements is they're a bit stuttery, aren't they? It's not really flowing that well because we're sending a new instruction every time. We're just saying it to move one stud at a time and then we're sending lots and lots of instructions of what, where we want it to move. So an alternative way of doing this would be to have the part unanchored, these ones we'd all anchored, but this one we're going to keep unanchored and we're going to add in a property called body position and that has some default values. If we go and run now it'll fly off into the distance over here and if we look at the properties of body position you can see it's got this position element specified here and it's got all these forces that's going to apply. So it handles all the physics for us. So we don't have to worry too much about our calculations. But we can see what it's doing is it's applying force in the direction to put the part, take the part from its current position to the position of 0, 50, 0. So let's copy one of our scripts from our other parts and paste it in here. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set, first of all, the position. We're going to need to change that. We don't want 0, 50, 0. So we're going to say position.body.position.position .position equals the position of the part plus whatever sent to the move variable. But this time we don't need this while loop. So we can, and we're gonna to need to add in some weights I think down here. So we'll add in some weights down here. Add in some little delays between the movements 
but the movements themselves are going to carry on continuously. So let's go and run that. Hopefully that works. And we've got some very slow movement back and forth. So maybe we should change these. Uh, yes, we need to, instead of moving one stud, we want to move 10 studs. 10 studs in each direction. Run that again. And it's a bit quicker now. And notice how it glides. You can see it accelerates and then slows down its movement in each direction. So that's m flowing much more nicely than these ones over here. And they're all doing a bit of a dance now, aren't they? All going back and forth. <laughs> so I think that about brings us to the end of this one. There are three ways that we can move uh, parts and objects using the vector three value. Any questions, as always, comment and I'll try and get back to you. And maybe you have an idea for a future video, another question that I can answer. So leave that down in a comment also. And one last thing is I now have a Discord that you can join if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, just a general community. It's not all about this YouTube channel, but sort of a general Roblox themed Discord community. If you fancy joining, the comment will be down in the description. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.